Yo, so, you know, people, listen, there was a lot of films I wasn't able to see during lockdown, you know, one of those was Bill and Ted Face the Music. Now, I was skeptical at the time, I will not lie, I was skeptical, but I hoped, I hoped this would be good. Like, for years, we'd heard talk about a third film. You know what I mean? It was one of those things that was always rumbling, but nothing ever happened. But I feel that even, you know, like, because what? The last film, Bogus Journey, that came out in 91. You know what I mean? And... You kind of felt that was it, right? We don't need another one. You know what I mean? It felt like, yo, everything was tight. You know what I mean? The story was cool. But, yeah, then came word that they were actually filming this film, right, in 2019. And so we're like, okay. All right, let's see what happens. Jerrine, let's hope. Let's hope. Right, so this new one is directed by Dean Parasot. And it's actually written by Chris Matheson and Ed Solomon. Which, you know, I think that gives you, a, a you know, a like, okay. Because they wrote Excellent Avenger and Bogus Journey. You know what I mean? So... Those two films, great. Those two films were great. And like the fact that Bogus Journey wasn't, you know, Highlander 3 or even Highlander 2, you know what I mean? Wasn't that. So you're just like, okay, so, yo, they were able to, you know, do a sequel to Excellent Journey that worked and was still so much fun. So you were just like, all right, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. So, you know, Face of Music popped up on Prime the other day. And I was like, yo, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Now, I kind of feel when a film has as many producers as this one, that's when it might become a little problematic, right? So the film is produced by David Herring, Scott Kruf, Alex Le Lebovicki, uh, Steve Ponce, Ed Solomon, Alex Winter, you know. It is executive produced by Stephen Soderbergh, John Santilli, William Sadler, John Ryan Jr., uh, Christian Mercury, Grant Guffrey, Scott. Fisher, Patrick W. Duggan, Courtney Chen, and Ray Burdu. It is co-executive produced by Scott H. Cohen, uh, Brent Gutman, Waylon Lin, Jacqueline Mahan, Bella Pace, R. Scott Reed, Marcus L. Rogers, and Stephanie Weir. It is co-produced by Ashley Waldron um, and Elliot Grangy. And it is associate produced by David Hillary, 
Do, 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 do. And Michael J. Oran. And line produced by Jeanette Voltuno, which is a lot of fucking people, right? So a lot of fucking people involved. Now, a, look, a lot of times, that's just name, right? It's a way of giving people extra credits and all of that. So you wonder, right? You wonder, but it's a lot of people involved. Music is Mark Ishram. Cinematography is Shelley Johnson. Um, Don Zinnemann edits the film. Casting was Nicole Abelera, Janine McCarthy, and Leslie Wu. Production design is Melanie Jones. Art direction is Zach Faust. Um, Selena von Denk Brink is set decoration, costume design is Jennifer Starak. Um, okay, the cast. Well, oh, people, we have got Keanu Reeves as Ted, Alex Winter as Bill. They're back. We then have got their kids. Um, yeah, so there's Billy, played by Bridget Lundy Payne, right, and uh, Fear, played by Samara Weaving, um, there's Kelly, played by Kirsten Schull, um, we got Death, William Sadler. Uh, we got Dennis Caleb McCoy, played by Anthony Carrigan. Elizabeth, played by Aaron Haynes. Joanna, played by Jamin J. Ma Mays. So, yeah, I think the wives are played by different people. I think, right? Um, Ted's dad, Chief Logan, is played by Hal Landon Jr. We've got Deacon, um, his brother, played by Beck Bennett. Missy, is played by Amy Stooch. Uh, the Great Leader is played by Holland Taylor. Um, Dave Grohl pops up. Got Jimi Hendrix played by Daz Man Steel, Louis Armstrong played by Jeremiah Kraft, Ling Lun played by Sharon G, Grom played by Patty Annie Miller. There's a hologram of great George Carlin, Rufus, right? Um, Rufus is actually voiced by Peter Mikkel. Uh, there's a, yeah, there's Jesus played by Jared Bankins. Um, Khalid is played by Mickey Gooch Jr. Um, Yeah, oh, Jared Bankins also plays a young version of Ted. A young person of Bill is played by Bill, Billy Slaughter. Babe Ruth is played by Reese Lucelot. George Washington, William E. Harris, Queen Elizabeth, Kimberly Stockton. Uh, Cleopatra is played by Bridget Nicole Andrews. Buddha, Artis Bernie. Harriet Tubman is played by... Georgia Coran and um, hmm, who else do we have? Josephine Baker is played by Charisma Morris. Gandhi is played by Ned Yusuf. And Kubra 
Kubla Khan, this is from Trevor Tommy Wong, Amelia Urquhart, Linda Ayif, Fridu is played by Diana Burns, and do, do, do. and Kid Cuddy, <laughs> Kid Cuddy crops up in it, and he actually plays a big part of the piece. Right, which is interesting. Mozart is played by Daniel Dorr. Um, hmm, I think, I think that's it. Right, I think they're the the main our main players. You know, they're our main players. Now, the gist of the story is this. Once told they'd saved the universe during a time-traveling adventure, two would-be rockers from Sam Dinas, California, Bill and Ted find themselves as middle-aged dads still trying to crank out a hit song and fulfilling their destiny. Right? So, yeah, that's it. Which is kind of fine, but... It was still a thread of the second film, you know what I mean? Trying to work out this song. And, and I think it was just like to to have them in this place where there's just so nowhere near and so much time has gone on is a little, it feels a little bit baffling and a little bit contrived, you know? It's kind of odd. So we're, we're watching this thing, trying to go, okay, so where are, we, where are we taking this story? And the daughters, who they, you know, the daughters have got their names, but they, they call Little Bill, Little Ted, which is just a bit like, okay. But obviously, right, so Bill and his wife have Little Ted. Ted and his wife have Little Bill. Yeah, which is just a bit like, okay, all right, we're doing it like that, fine, Let, let's, all right, we'll skirt past that, and let's get into the gist. Now, the, basically, the story is the first film, you know what I mean, that's kind of it. Now, there's a, a few changes, where it's the daughters that are going, collecting these people from time. But yeah, it's just kind of following that bit. Now they throw in stuff from the second film, going to hell and all of that kind of stuff. It's all a little bit, I hate to say it, but it's all a little Highlander free people. You know what I mean? It, it looks like they're trying to take the best parts of the first two films and go, okay, how can we, you know, that works so well. Let's, you know, put lightning back in the bottle and give you this third film. That's what it felt like. Because it's just reusing old gags and plot threads. But they just don't carry that same oomph. Right? We've got these characters who were funny and, and kind of charming, right? Playing the, these guys, these kind of, you know, dullards, but lovable, who are just trying to figure stuff out. But the problem is, they're exactly the same, right? But they, we've got them exactly the same. There's no evolution. And listen, Pete, like, there's people, obviously, who aren't maybe the sharpest tack in the box. But it's not to say that they're just straight dumb. It's just like, look, people don't understand uh, maps and algebra, right? People, you know, some people find it hard to kind of get their heads around um, friggin' Dickens. Right? And Shakespeare. You know? But 
they're not stupid. You can have normal conversations with those people, right? They even talk about all other things, and it's fine. There's just certain things you'd be like, ah, it's not my thing, you know? But the way these characters, is like, they just don't get anything. And you're just like, I don't think they would get through to that point of life. Right, if you just couldn't work out anything at all, I'm surprised they understood how to make their wives pregnant. You know, is 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 that shit? You feel me? So it's just like, oh, why you, why play them like that? It it just feels kind of lazy. Right, it's it's a, oh yeah, let's have them dumb, right? So yeah, we can have a bit where they don't understand this, or you know, their wives are asking them things and they just can't comprehend, and it's just like I just don't buy it, right? I don't buy it. And then you have the daughters exactly the same, right? The daughters are exactly. And it's just like, no. <laughs> like, no. Because the, you know, the genes, it's not all from the dads, it's some from the mum, right? So there'll be different personalities, right? It's, it's not going to be exact. Like, oh, just making them exactly like the dads was just like, again, lazy. Because you're not giving them their own personalities. You're not going, okay, let's let's make it interesting. Let's make it complex. Let's have this. Um, you know, that's what you're doing. And you're just like, what are we doing here? Right? We we have these new characters that from time that they've thrown in. And I've got Louis Armstrong. I don't know what the fuck that was. I don't know what the fuck. Like, you basically just have to tell this guy to, like, have a stupid grin on his <laughs> Have a stupid grin on his face all the time. And then talk, like, oh, mammy-ish. And then he's just like, oh. Oh. I just felt, like, super just off-key. You know what I mean? Just felt just off. And it's just, like, completely just no need for it. I, it, it was just very, very weird. And also, like, the selection of the artists, again, didn't really make any sense. Because it's not like they were like, okay, we want to do this sort of song. So, oh, we'll need a string set. We'll need this. We'll need... No, they were just like, oh, okay, we'll grab this. But and you're just like, well, what are we doing here? All right? It was all... Then the people in the future, the decisions they were going, oh, so we've got to do this again, didn't make any sense to me, right? Didn't make any sense. I just, it, it, it felt like it was all over the place. Felt like it was all over the place. There were these, I would say, the, uh, the future stuff, oh, even with my shitty eyesight, I look so fake. He <laughs> looks so green screen. It was insane. And yes, I understand what I just said there, people. The future looked fake. I understand that <laughs> this is fantasy. But when we, you know, can watch certain things and the effects are so good, right? And you just feel like you're in this world, right? Or you feel like you're seeing people in a spaceship going through the stars and stuff like that. And you're like, yo, this, no. This didn't feel like that or look like that at all. Yeah, not the best. Not the best, unfortunately. Because I love those first two films. I wanted this to be great. It just, I don't know. I, for me, it didn't work. Right, and Kid Cudi, that felt so random. That felt so random. Now, listen, I think Cuddy and other things, and he's great. I love his music. You feel me? Like, that's, that's the rap I love, man. 
But his inclusion in this kind of scratching my head going, wait, why? Right? There just felt like no need for it. Like this, this he comes in um, in the second half of the film, right? Maybe the last third, but definitely the second half. So the story was moving along. It was doing its thing. And so there was no need for that character. And they, they go back to him and be like, kid, no, give us some science and blah, blah, blah. But it's just, it all felt unnecessary. You know, it was very odd. It was very odd. You know what I mean? Like, it's not to say Cuddy's acting was bad. It was just, it felt like an unnecessary thread to the story. But, yeah, like, some of the acting in this was decent. Some of it was just, what was going, like, David Grohl just was, felt mad random. Felt like, what are we doing here? What are, and there was a lot that, that was just going all the way through. I'm watching going, what are we doing here? What's happening? Oh. It did feel like, right, this was the introduction of the daughters to spin this series off into us following them. That's what this felt like. And I really don't want that. I, I just think, I don't think it would carry because we don't really get introduced to the daughters. That's a thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not like they've got these interesting personalities and you'd be like, yo, I wonder what they would do in the future or, oh, that would be fun to spin off and look at that. No, because you've made them these one-dimensional clones of Bill and Ted. So, yeah, I'm amused, people. Now, I'm sure, I am sure, some people have watched this and thought it was great and laughed and chuckled and just enjoyed it, which is awesome. Just for me, for me, I'm just going to act like this does not exist. And Bill and Ted is just a two series franchise. That's, <laughs> that's where I am at. But yo, Hey, it's on Prime Video now for free people. So, yeah, go at it. And maybe you will enjoy it. Maybe you'll enjoy it. Unfortunately, I didn't know.